Hi folks, my name is Emily Weber. I'm a solutions architect at Amazon Web Services and today you're gonna learn how to get started with AWS Trainium and the Neuron SDK. Let's dive in. So I'm coming to you today from Annapurna Labs. Annapurna Labs is a company that Amazon acquired in 2015 because of one big idea. Annapurna believed it was possible to develop infrastructure for the scale of the cloud from the bottom up, whether it was reinventing the hypervisor stack through the Nitro system, developing custom CPUs that enable optimal price performance for CPU applications, or now accelerating AIML models with unparalleled energy efficiency and price performance. In the words of Andy Jassy, if and when they go back and tell the story of AWS, our acquisition of Annapurna Labs will be one of our most important moments. What this means is we're bringing you more than a decade of silicon innovation at AWS. Let's take a look at these areas one by one. Fundamentally, the Nitro system forms the backbone of modern Amazon EC2 instances. When we take a new server, we add a new server to our data centers, to our regions, to our availability zones. What makes that server an EC2 instance is Nitro. The reason why you benefit from Nitro without even knowing it perhaps, is that Nitro ensures that the majority of the CPU processing power, the memory capacity, the memory bandwidth, and fundamentally the energy efficiency of that host is made available to you, the client, through the Nitro cards. Nitro enables AWS and Amazon to deliver more EC2 instances at a greater pace of innovation with fundamentally better energy efficiency and performance for customers, all with unparalleled security. Nitro system physically separates your data, which is running on the EC2 instances, from the control plane that's necessary to manage and govern that instance within our fleet of instances. And so Nitro system forms the backbone of every modern EC2 instance today. After realizing that this was possible, <laughs> after seeing the benefits to customers, we doubled down and explored CPU processing. And so the Graviton line of CPU processors are custom chips developed by Annapurna Labs for CPU-based applications. Today, the majority of new compute that comes onto AWS is powered by Graviton for CPU processing. In our third area of innovation has been developing custom chips to accelerate AIML models. We started this journey in 2019 by realizing that we could introduce cost savings to host Alexa. So Alexa models such as small deep learning models, text-to-speech were hosted on Inferentia 1 chips on AWS to power Alexa. This enabled Alexa to deliver better experiences to customers through moving faster at increased cost efficiency. After that, we wanted to explore training, and so we developed Trainium 1. So Trainium 1 is a chip designed to train and host large language models of up to 70 and 100 billion parameters with up to 50% better price performance relative to comparable Amazon EC2 instances. And last year, we announced our Trainium 2 chip, which expands on this concept even further to enable customers to train and host the frontier language models available on the cloud today. Fundamentally, what this means for customers is you have choice. You have choice about which accelerators to use to train and host your language models. You can opt in to achieve the price performance that's made available across the entire range of AWS Trainium and Inferentia chips instances and capabilities. So AWS Inferentia is available for small deep learning models, such as the text-to-speech that powered Alexa many years ago. Uh, Inferentia 2 is available for medium-scale inference LLMs and smaller multimodal models. AWS Trainium is great for fine-tuning language models, uh, training and hosting medium-scale language models, and then Trainium 2 is available for the frontier uh, foundation models of today. We are so excited to build on top of this concept with our key partner, Anthropic. So Anthropic trains their language models on Trainium today, and we are delivering to them Project Rainier. Project Rainier is hundreds of thousands of Trainium 2 chips made available within a single training cluster, which is more than five times larger than Anthropic's next largest training cluster. Believe it or not, this is just the beginning. Now let's take a look at Trainium 2. So this is the accelerator. 
This is Trinium 2. Now let's imagine we're a data scientist, we're a developer, we're a machine learning engineer, and we're building our PyTorch model, we're building our JAX model, uh, maybe we're exploring Pandas data frames, and we start on CPU, right? We start on CPU to pip install our libraries, uh, we set up our virtual environments, and uh, we're happy doing our development on CPU first, right? CPUs are great for iterating quickly. Um, they're great for obviously accelerating single transactions. Um, but in order to take this idea and scale it further, making it available for customers, we need to accelerate this. How does this work? Uh, so we start with our tensors, we start with our data, we start with our libraries on CPU, then we need to move that down to the accelerator. Uh, we move that down through what's called a PCIe bus uh, to what's called HBM, or high bandwidth memory. So these four quadrants, you can see them here, those are the HBM banks. So when you're loading your tensors to device, through say like PyTorch XLA, they're gonna land from the CPU onto these four HBM banks that you can see. The reason why you care about this is because those HBM banks are gonna be accelerating your data at a clock of nearly three terabytes per second, which is pretty good, but we can do better. The way we're gonna do better is by moving your data even further down to this area, and this is the actual silicon. This is the die itself. So Trainium 2 has two dies. That's these two big rectangles. So we move data from the smaller rectangles, which is the HBM bank, onto the silicon itself, hitting what's called the neuron core. Neuron core is the heart of the accelerator. That's where we print the compute engines necessary to accelerate your algorithms and your models. The reason why you want to land here is because those larger uh, neuron cores are going to move data 20 times faster than you're able to move the data on the HBM banks. And so everything that we do in AIML, your entire deep learning stack, your Python stack, your compiler stack, your neuron SDK stack, all of that is designed to try to move your data as quickly as we possibly can on these neuron cores, on the silicon itself. So that is the heart of the AWS AIML cloud is right there uh, on the, the neuron core itself. So let's take a look at some of the specs. So Trainium 2, the chip itself, again, has two dies, four HBM banks, and then eight neuron cores, actually. So you have eight neuron cores per chip. Uh, the chip itself, the sum of all of those HBM banks, gives you nearly 100 gigabytes of HBM capacity. So that's the size of, of data that you can attempt to, to land on the HBM banks. Uh, as I mentioned before, you can move data at a clock of nearly three terabytes per second uh, on those HBM banks, and you're gonna get 1.3 petaflops of dense compute on one single chip. Now, we're gonna take one single chip and we're gonna package up 16 of those chips into one instance. So the Trainium 2 instance has 16 of those chips in total. This gives you the sum of all of that HBM bandwidth now is 46 terabytes per second. The sum of all the HBM capacity is 1.5 terabytes. So 1.5 terabytes of memory capacity, accelerator memory capacity on a single tier and two instance. Uh, and then you can move data between chips, so called chip to chip, through the neuron link. And so neuron link gives you one terabyte per second of bandwidth. And EFA is how you can move from a, across instances. So tier and two to tier and two through EFA at a rate of 3.2 terabytes per second. And then the sum total petaflops that are available on the tier and two instance is 20.8 petaflops of compute. Now, we're gonna take those tier and two instances, we're gonna combine four of those tier and two instances constructed inside of two racks to create what's called a Trainium 2 Ultra Server. That is what you see here. So the Trainium 2 Ultra Server fundamentally is again two racks. You can see them. So you have two server racks, and then you have four tier and two servers. All four of those tier and two servers are connected to create one uh, single ultra server. And so the single ultra server 
is the most powerful way to use AWS AI chips for training and hosting frontier models on EC2 today. And so the sum of all of that memory capacity on one server on one ultra server is six terabytes of HBM capacity moving at a clip of two terabytes per second in your neuron link bandwidth. So again, that's chip to chip. And then between ultra servers uh, for the EFA bandwidth, you're gonna get 12.8 terabytes per second. Uh, your HBM bandwidth capacity is, is 185 terabytes per second. And then all of the compute that you're gonna get is 83 petaflops of dense compute available on ultra server. And it is the ultra server that forms the basis of Project Rainier where we are creating the largest cluster of training for language models at Anthropic today. Now, we, we looked at the specs. We know this sounds so exciting. We want to get started. And, and how do we actually do that? So we have many tutorials, capabilities, and content that's going to help you learn how to do that. The YouTube series is uh, for this, essentially. So we have a lot of videos uh, to help you get started. But I want to help you understand how the software comes together. So fundamentally, at the basis of the AWS AIML stack, are again Trainium and Inferentia instances. So the chips themselves are made available onto the instances. And then the way to land your software and your programs and your models on our chips is through the Neuron SDK. So the Neuron SDK is a comprehensive set of features, capabilities, libraries, scripts, and artifacts that you can use to land your models and your applications on Trainium and Inferentia instances. Then you have the entire cloud to build on top of. So whether it's AWS Parallel Cluster, Amazon SageMaker, AWS Batch, ECS, EKS, DLAMI, so many options that you can use to develop your own AIML models on Trainum and Inferentia today. Additionally, we have support for many uh, ML frameworks and libraries out of the box, whether that's Hugging Face, Rayserve, VLLM, OpenXLA, JAX, Kubernetes, Domino Data Lab, you name it. <laughs> many, many different options that you can use to get started today. And with that, let's take a look at the demo. Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to the demo for Trainium. Uh, for this demo, we have two use cases, text generation and image generation. Uh, let's start with text generation first. Uh, we are going to pick up one of the prompts from this given list and see how the text generation looks like on Trainium instances. As soon as we click on submit button, we can see on the left, we have Trainium 1 and on the right, Trainium 2 is in action. Both instances are running the same prompt and the prompt is in the aggressive voice of Gordon Ramsay, give me a recipe that combines two comforting foods. Uh, with that prompt, uh, right away, we will notice a clear difference in responsiveness. Trainium 2 generates output significantly faster despite running a much larger and more complex model. For this use case, Trainium 1 is running Llama 70B model, while Trainium 2 is running a massive Llama 405 billion parameters model. That's nearly six times the model size as compared to Trainium 1, yet Trainium 2 is still faster. This speaks volumes about the leap in hardware performance that Trainium 2 brings to the table. While the tech, text generation is in progress, uh, why don't we take a moment to review what makes Trainium 2 capable of hosting such massive models? A single Trainium 2 instance comes up with 16 neuron devices, each device containing eight neuron cores. That's 128 cores per instance, all bagged by a massive 1.5 terabytes of high bandwidth memory. This architecture of Trainium 2 enables hosting and running extra large models like Llama 405 billion model on a single instance. Now circling back to our demo, as we can see Trainium 2 has already completed the task. It has generated the entire output for us. Uh, meanwhile, Trainium 1 still working through it. It's almost there, uh, generating the text just like Gordon Ramsay would be talking to us. Uh, just like Gordon Ramsay would be telling us how to uh, uh, follow a recipe. And with that, it's also done. 
Uh, now let's go back to the second use case, uh, which is image generation. For image generation also, we are going to pick up a prompt and get the images generated on Trainium 1 and Trainium 2. Uh, the first prompt that we are going to pick up is specific to a medieval family, insanely detailed, hyper-realistic portrait. We can see Trainium 1 and Trainium 2 in action, left and right. On the right, we see Trainium 2 coming up uh, with the image within a little bit more than three seconds. And we can check the image quality as well here. Trainium 1 also came up with the same image because we are using the same model in this case. Uh, we are going to pick up another uh, prompt this time. And this is black and white Victorian living room with a ghost and a young woman. And again, we are going to ask Trainium 1 and Trainium 2 to generate the images. And as we see, again, Trainium 2 comes up within a little bit more than three seconds of the time. And Trainium 1 also comes up uh, with the same image. Uh, with that, uh, that's pretty much that we have for Trainium demo for today. Thank you so much for watching. All right, so I hope you enjoyed the demo. Thank you very much, Sadaf, uh, for putting the demo together. Really appreciate it. And then just a, a call to action. So you can learn more about Tier 2 today on our blog posts. We have lots of YouTube videos where we discuss this in much more detail. And talk to your account team. Figure out how you can request access uh, in your own environments. The rest of the YouTube series that we have here is enabled for you to get started with Tier 1. So we're going to walk through all of the key steps that you need, such as setting up your development environment, running inference on a language model, training language which models in single node, multi node, setting up EKS, setting up hyperpod, analyzing performance, and developing kernels. So, we have a lot in store for you. Uh, and with that, thanks very much. And I want to say a big thank you to the rest of the team. There are it, it takes a village <laughs> to make this happen. So many amazing builders, dreamers, designers, engineers who make this entire stack possible. And I just want to say a giant thank you uh, to everyone who, who brings this to life. And so with that, see you next time.